Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I recognize what I'm up against speaking about power electronics uh, this afternoon after lunch, so please grab a cup of coffee, and I appreciate you coming and, and listening to our talk. Uh, we are a designer and manufacturer of specialty power electronics. Our pedigree is systems engineering for micro CHP high temperature PEM fuel cells. And when we were doing the system engineering for that, one of our largest problems was the inappropriate power electronics that were available on the marketplace. So what we decided to do is attempt to tackle that and provide the right uh, power electronics for not only micro CHP grid connected fuel cells, but also uh, every electrochemical device that we know of. So our initial markets for this will be, as I said, fuel cells, hybrid electric vehicles, energy storage, solar and small wind, distributed generation, and flow batteries. We're located in Albany, New York. Let me back up and I'd like to thank Tobias and the Hanover Fair for having us here, and also the state of New York from which we received a grant to be able to come and have a booth here at Hanover. So what we found, and in doing our customer discovery, what we found from a, a variety of other uh, um, distributed generation, renewable energies, uh, power electronics type people is that the power electronics that are available today are not appropriate for the markets that we're after. All right, we just found that they had incompatible operating profiles, the input voltages were too high, the input voltage range was too narrow, they were very expensive, they were usually multi-stage affairs, so they didn't lend themselves well to efficiency, they were large, and we decided what if we were able to turn this on its head and create a platform of power electronics that was specifically designed for what we were about. We found that in researching that, we, there were three main attributes that we needed to bring to the table. We needed to be able to provide high voltage boost. Um, this needed to be done efficiently, it needed to be done in a very compact package, and it needed to be high. It couldn't be two for one, three for one, it needed to be eight to one, or 10 to one, or 12 to one, which would allow electrochemical devices that want to run at 40 volts, or 38 volts, or 60 volts, be able to boost up and be able to access a high voltage bus. It also needed to have galvanic isolation. So we found when we were grid connected, obviously we had to have that. But also, the more people that we talked to really appreciate the fact that we have galvanic isolation, which eliminates noise back and forth between and among the systems. And then the third is bidirectional operation. So that means that we can boost in one direction and we can buck power back in the other direction. So for example, if we're working with ultra capacitors or, or flow batteries or energy storage, we can charge and discharge, um, not simultaneously, but with the same system. For each of our customers, they require a bit of all three of these, but these are knobs that we can turn in order to be able to give the customer exactly what they want. So certain customers, bi-directionality is paramount, and we can harden that, we can make that very, very specific for their needs. Other customers need the high boost, and they don't need galvanic isolation, so we can, we can turn that down. So these are knobs that we can turn in order to be able to optimize our platform for your systems and give you the most bang for the buck and the best economics. So our first commercial product, and you can come to our booth and, and check it out. Our first commercial product is a 10 kilowatt product. And the input voltage, you can run it all the way down to essentially zero volts input. So you can do single digit voltage, 10, 10 volts, but more realistically, it's between the 40 and 80 and 100 volt input range. We are current limited. So you can see the, the graph down in the lower, lower left kind of gives you an idea of the map of operating ranges that we have and the different, the different input and output regimes that we can operate in. But we have an input current limit of 93 amps. Obviously, the system will begin to derate from 10 kilowatts as you go down in voltage because of the amp, um, the amp limitations. Across the board, however, our conversion efficiency is going to be greater than 95%. We've done quite a bit of initial testing. We're, we hope to get 96, 97% efficiency. The, the unique characteristic of our system is that the higher the boost that is required, the more efficient the system operates. So if you're looking at two to one boost, three to one boost, we are actually less efficient, still above 95%, but we're actually most efficient at eight to one boost, 
10 to 1 boost. Uh, the output voltage range, given that this first product is a 6.6 .6 times boost, this first product can operate anywhere from an output voltage of 6.6 .6 volts to 450 volts output with an output current limit of 23 amps. I want to emphasize that the cooling is passive for this device. We found that active cooling, whether it be liquid or forced air, is a very complex system problem for the, for the overall system engineer. And we've, we found that, um, that the ability to provide passive cooling, it is convective cooling, but the ability for it to be not active is, is for some, in some cases, the selling point for some of our customers. And it's very small. So our initial first generation commercial system, less than three kilograms, it's about the size of a laptop. So we believe that we're gonna be doing a hardening turn after this, we can reduce the size and weight by an additional 50%. So from a product benefit standpoint, if we just look at the fuel cell product benefit, what we see and what we were running up against when we were doing fuel cell systems is that if you look at the cell voltage and a typical gentle fuel cell degradation curve over life, there's a point where your power electronics cuts out. The fuel cell itself is not dead. As a matter of fact, under many circumstances, it has 50% more life in it, but you can't extract it effectively because the voltage is too low. Typically, if you look at, at um, 0.65 cell voltages, if you're looking at a 100 cell stack, you're looking at somewhere below 70 volts is where your power electronics is typically going to cut out. That means that there's a lot of energy and a lot of value left on the table for that device. By being able to extend the voltage range down and be able to efficiently extract that increased amount of energy, you're able to access more energy, it's better ROI, you have a longer stack life, you have less service hours, and um, similar graphs, but completely different, similar graphs can be drawn from a variety of other distributed generation electrochemical devices, energy storage. So an example, of a very easy, easy to visualize example is a multi-stack system. So for example, if, for, if you have multiple PEM stacks or solid oxide stacks that are operating in parallel, by having one of these devices that's optimized for your application, this will allow you to, to boost up and tie into a high voltage, D, high voltage DC bus that goes out to a main inverter. That way your individual energy storage or your individual fuel cell can operate where it wants to operate in its life cycle, can go down to 40 volts while its neighbor is operating at 60 volts, and it's all fine because you're boosting up to a 400 volt, 500 volt, 600 volt DC bus. So your bus does not depress down to where your lowest operating st uh, stack or module is, is operating at. So this allows you to, for independent stack control and monitoring, it allows you to take one stack out of service if that stack has a, has a reliability problem and still maintain that high voltage DC bus. If you can imagine the cost, it can eliminate thousands of dollars in bus bars and high voltage DC connections by being able to boost up to 400 volts, 500 volts. Now you have small wires that you're tracing back to your, to your um, inverter. Another example would be multiple DC sources that are not operating at the same DC voltage. In the past example, you had repeating units of the same, relatively the same DC voltage. Now you have solar, you have potentially small wind, you have uh, energy storage, all of which can be brought to the same high voltage DC bus that goes to your inverter and allows you individual control. So our stage of developments, we have released units to customers for field trials. At the same time, we're doing a full system characterization in the lab with the information that we get from the field and the information we get from the lab, we can take the next step in hardening the device. Again, our target is to reduce the size. Remember I said it was about the size of a laptop? Reducing the size by 50%, the weight by 50%, and our goal is to be the lowest cost power electronics in the industry. And we're also analyzing certifications to determine what sort of certifications we have to pass in order to be a widely deployed commercial product. And we are developing strategic relationships in markets that we don't really understand. We're experts in the micro CHP grid tied market. We're not experts in the vehicle market, in the fuel cell range extender market. And these are very, very strategic markets for us that we're interested in developing partnerships with. 
So right now, if you visit our booth, you'll see our 10 kilowatt converter. This is for early customer testing. We think it would be applicable to H&EV units for auxiliary power, energy storage, electrolyzers. We will follow on with ganging three of these together into a closely coupled 30 kilowatt system for evaluation by vehicles by a further energy storage. Um, we've, been, we've received a significant amount of pull during, during this week while we've been here for a smaller system. We see a three kilowatt converter that's also married to an inverter stage and then a 10 kilowatt inverter after that. So to recap, we're seeking additional strategic partnerships in order to guide our product development towards what customers actually want. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John Vogel. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes. So, great presentation. Uh, is there a specific reason why did you choose to go with a 10 kilowatt as a starting system? So why did we go with a 10 kilowatt to start? That was a very interesting question. We came here last year with uh, the system requirements for a three kilowatt system. And we asked a bunch of people, I don't know if, you're, if, if you remember last year, but there were trucks and large vehicles all over the hall. And we were told repeatedly that we, need, we should be in a building block of 10 and not in a building block of three. So we went back and we did a redesign and we went to 10. We believe that the 10 as an early customer unit can capture the smaller units and we can fairly quickly adapt to a five or a three if need be in order to service that market. More difficult to go up. Thank you very much for the questions. Okay, if not, please visit them at their booth C741, also in this direction. You're one of our dear uh, customers coming every year back, so I think <laughs> the example you just gave from last year that you met with clients here is really nice. Thank you for this. Thank you. <laughs>